Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the paper 6 exam for October-November 2022 variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says a student investigates the period of a pendulum. Figure 1.1 and 1.2 shows the setup. Explain briefly how to measure the center of the pendulum bob as accurately as possible. We can say use a set square as a pointer with a ruler. So the edge of the set square will point towards the center of the bob. Part B says the student adjusts the length of the pendulum until the distance L measured from the bottom of the clamp supporting the pendulum to the center of the bob is 50.0 centimeters and he displaces the bob slightly and releases it so that it swings. Figure 1.2 shows one complete oscillation of the pendulum. He measures and records the time T420 complete oscillations. Calculate and record in table 1.1 the period T of the pendulum and we have 20 oscillations so we divide by 10 and we have 20 oscillations so we divide by 20 and the period is the time for one complete oscillation. Calculate and record in table 1.1 the value of T squared of the uh, time. So dividing 28.2 by 20 that gives us an answer of 1.41 and squaring that gives us an answer of 1.99. Part C says plot a graph of t squared per s squared on the y axis, so we label it t squared per second squared against l per centimeter on the x axis, so we label that too l per centimeter, and store the t squared axis to a convenient value close to the minimum value of t squared, and t squared started with 1.99 and ended with 3.65. We can calculate the scale by subtracting the maximum number minus the minimum number over the number of divisions. We have one, two, three, four, five large divisions. That gives us an answer of 0 0.332. And comparing that to 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, which are the allowed scales, 0 0.1 is too small, 0 0.2 is again too small, 0 0.5 is just larger than the answer. So we go every 0 0.5. But we can start from 1.5 so that it would be close to the minimum number on the t squared axis. So starting at this point with 1.5 and adding 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3 and 3.5. As for the x axis, the numbers for L were 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. So that's a scale of 1s going every 10. So we can start from 50, then 60, 70, 80 and 90 and now we plot the points the first point was at 50 and 1.99 which is approximately at 2 so this is the first point the second point was at 60 and 2.43 that's before 2.5 this is 2.4 so 2.43 is about this position the third point is 70 and 2.82 so this is 2.9, 2.8, 2.82 would be at this point approximately. The next one is 80 and 3.2. So this is 3.1, this is 3.2. So this is a good point. And the last point is 90 with 3.65. This is 3.6, this is 3.65. And now for the best fit, we try to join the first and last points and see if it makes a good best fit. So it looks alright, so we are going to leave it as it is. For these cells, determine the gradient G of the graph. Show clearly on the graph how you obtained the necessary information, which are two points. So we have the first point at this point, that's a good point. And we can choose any other point that makes a good intersection with the grid. So we have this point here. We can take the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of this point. And we are required to draw a triangle pointing towards the two points. So a vertical line from the highest point and the horizontal line from the lowest point. And here we have y coordinate 2.15. And for the higher point, we have 3.65. So these are the two y coordinates. As for the x coordinates, we have 90 and we have here 54. So applying y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we have 3.65 minus 2.15 over 90 minus 54. This gives an answer of 0.0416 recurring, so this is approximately 0 
and the unit for the y axis was second squared divided by the unit of the x axis centimeters so it's second squared per centimeter not all of you will draw the same exact line so you will not all get the same exact gradient and that's okay Part E says, explain briefly why timing 20 oscillations gives a more accurate result for the period T than timing one oscillation. We say that it reduces percentage error due to reaction time or reflex time. Question two says, a student investigates the resistance of a lamp. She uses a circuit shown in figure 2.1. On figure 2.1, draw a voltmeter connected to measure the potential difference across the lamp. So this is in parallel with the lamp. So we draw a circle with a V inside and two terminals connected with branches from both ends of the lamp. Part B says the student places a sliding contact S on the resistance wire CE as close as possible to point C. She measures the potential difference V1 across lamp L and the current I1 in the circuit. The readings are shown in figure 2.2 and 2.3. We have to record the readings from the voltmeter on the left and the ammeter on the right. So this reading, we have five divisions between two and three. So each division is 0 0.2. So that's 2.4 for the voltmeter. And we have here 10 divisions between 0.2 and 0.4 with 0.3 in the middle. So each division is 0 0.02. So that would be 0 0.32. Double I says calculate the resistance R1 of the lamp L. Use the equation R1 is equal to V1 over I1. So we divide the values of 2.4 by 0 0.32. That gives an exact value of 7.5 ohms. Part C says she places a sliding contact S on the resistance wire as close as possible to point D. Point D is at the midpoint of the resistance wire. She measures the potential difference V2 across the lamp L. V2 is equal to 1.4. She measured the current I2 in the circuit. I2 is equal to 0 0.24. Calculate the resistance R2 of lamp L using the equation R2 is equal to V2 over I2 and include the unit. So V2 was equal to 1.4. I2 was equal to 0 0.24. That gives an answer of 5.83 recurring. So we approximate that to 5.8 or 5.83 and the unit is ohm. Part D says she places a sliding contact S on the resistance wire as close as possible to point E. She measures the potential difference V3 across lamp L. She measures the current R3 in the circuit. So we have 0 0.9 volts and 0 0.18 volts. And again, we are required to calculate the resistance. So we divide 0 0.9 over 0 0.18. That gives an answer of 5.0 ohms. Part E says complete the following statements referring to your practical experience and the results. As the length of resistance wire included in the circuit is increased, the brightness of the lamp. So if you increase the length of a wire in the circuit, that means you are increasing the resistance. So current decreases and the brightness of the lamp decreases. So this is the answer, decreases. And as the length of the wire included in the circuit is increased, so that was the experiment part 1, 2, and 3, and resistance R1, R2, R3. The resistance of the lamp again decreases it started with 7.5 then 5.8 and then 5. part f says a variable resistor can be used in this type of experiment in place of the resistance wire draw a circuit diagram to show a variable resistor in place of the resistance wire include the ammeter and voltmeter in your diagram so in the original diagram we had a power supply and a switch on the right side with an ammeter connected in series with it and on the left side we have the lamp and we added the voltmeter in parallel with the lamp like this and now instead of the resistance wire we are going to draw a variable resistor which is a rectangle with an arrow across the rectangle question 3 says a student investigates the effect of the starting temperature on the cooling rate of water figure 3.1 shows the apparatus used we have a beaker thermometer on a clamp and the thermometer in figure 3.2 shows the room temperature theta r at the beginning of the experiment record theta r this is just before 25 that's 23 and the unit degree celsius is already written part b says the student uses a measuring cylinder to pour 200 centimeter cubed of hot water into the beaker he records in table 3.1 the temperature theta of the hot water at time equals zero he measured and records in the table the water temperature every 30 seconds complete the time column 
So for every 30 seconds, we go from 0, then 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180 at the end. Part C says calculate the decrease in temperature delta theta 1 between time 0 and time 180. At time 0, the temperature was 88 in the table, and at time 180, the temperature was 67. So the difference here is 21 degrees Celsius. And then we are required to calculate the average rate of cooling C1 of the water using the equation C1 is delta theta 1, which is 21 degrees over delta t which is 180 seconds so 21 over 180 that gives an answer of 0 0.116 recurring or we can say that it is approximately 0 0.12 degrees celsius per second because we divide the temperature over time question d says the student empties the beaker he pours warm water into the same beaker he records in table 3.2 the temperature theta of the water at time 0, he measured and records in the table 3.2 the water temperature every 30 seconds. Again, using table 3.2, calculate the decrease in temperature, delta theta 2, between time 0 and 90. We have 74 minus 68. That gives us an answer of 6 degrees Celsius. Calculate the average rate of cooling C2 of the water using the equation C2 equal delta theta 2, which is 6 divided by the delta time, 90 seconds. This gives an answer of 0 0.06 recurring, so we can approximate that to 0 0.067, and the unit is again degrees Celsius per second. So we have two values for the rate of cooling, C1 and C2 now. Part E says, a student suggests that the rate of cooling of water depends on the initial temperature of the water, and one experiment started with a temperature 88 that gave a higher value for the rate of cooling, and the next experiment started with a temperature 74 and that got a lower rate of cooling so the conclusion is as initial temperature decreases the rate of cooling also decreases and the justification is that the value of c1 is greater than c2 or c2 less than c1 question f says state two requirements when reading the volume of water in a measuring cylinder in order to obtain an accurate result we say look perpendicular to the scale of the measuring cylinder and also look at the bottom of the meniscus of the liquid part g says suggest two possible variables that the students should keep constant so we were measuring temperature with time and we had different starting temperatures so we say keep room temperature the same and the amount of liquid or the volume of liquid the same. Question 4 says a student investigates the horizontal distance traveled by a metal ball after it rolls off the end of a plastic track. Figure 4.1 shows the setup. The ball rolls down a plastic track. The left hand side of the track is fixed. The right hand side can be adjusted so that the ball comes off the track at different angles. So we must measure the angle using a protractor. The student measures the horizontal distance that the ball travels from the right hand end of the track to the point that it hits the floor. Plan an experiment to investigate how the horizontal distance traveled by the metal ball depends on the angle that the right hand end of the track makes with the bench. So the independent variable here is the angle at which the ball leaves the track and the dependent variable would be the distance it travels after it leaves the track, the horizontal distance traveled. So we need a protractor to measure the uh, independent variable and we need a meter rule or a measuring tape to measure the dependent variable. And we mention any accuracy precautions to get two more marks. And controlled variables, we can say use the same track, use the same ball or the uh, same mass of ball. And for the distance, we can repeat the, uh, the measurement because not every time you release the ball it will reach the same exact distance so you will get an average distance for example and look perpendicular to the scale we can use a tray of sand to mark the point where the ball falls on the sand it will create a hole and we measure the distance to the hole as for the diagram we can say that we will start with drawing the ball here so this is the first label and we can draw a protractor like this so we have half a circle like this and we mentioned that this angle is theta for example or alpha or any letter and we labeled the protractor like this and we measure the distance from the edge of the bench or from the edge of the track so we label the edge of the track as a dashed line 
and we can draw a tray of sand as a rectangle with sand on the surface like this and we call it tray of sand and we have a meter rule at the base or attach as close as possible to the equipment and we label that also meter rule so this is the setup of the experiment the requirements are the following apparatus available the, to the student track with tan bus and clamp which is already drawn selection of metal bowls we will use the same bowl other apparatus normally available in a school laboratory can also be used in your plan you should list any additional apparatus we will mention them in writing or on the diagram either way you will get the mark explain briefly how you would do the investigation including the measurements you would take state the key variables to keep constant draw a suitable table with column headings not with values explain how you would use the results to reach a conclusion so first we can say set up apparatus as shown in the diagram then we say attach a protractor to the end of the track as shown to measure the angle theta and we mention an accuracy precaution we can say looking perpendicular to the scale then say use a tray of sand to mark the spot or the position where the ball lands then we start the experiment we say release the ball and measure the distance and we call it d1 for example from the end of the track to the center of the hole that the ball makes then we repeat the same measurement so we say repeat the above step with same angle to measure a new value for the distance and you call it d2 for example to calculate an average distance d average now the experiment is done we say repeat all steps with different angles theta but use same and now we mention some controlled variables track ball initial position or height of the ball and we draw the table we have the independent variable theta and the unit degrees we have two distances d1 in centimeters d2 in centimeters and we have the average distance in centimeters so these are the column headings for the experiment and we say at last plot a graph of theta per degree on x-axis against the average per centimeter on y-axis so this is the end of the experiment we mentioned independent variable dependent variable and how to measure them accurately that's four marks we mentioned controlled variables that's the fifth mark we drew a table and we set to plot a graph that's the two more marks at the end so this was the end of the exam i hope you enjoyed this video keep practicing and i will see you in another video